Hey everybody, this is Optometry Spark Notes, and it's a platform for everybody. Pre-optometry, optometry students, current optometrists, and retired ODs will explore different cases that optometrists face on a regular basis. This intends to serve as a community for ideas, learning, and growth of our field in optometry through discussions of standard of care and real world experiences. So go ahead and leave a comment in the comment sections below on these videos to explain your thoughts and we'll get a good discussion going. Now let's do it. Hey guys, so today we're going to talk about corneal abrasions due to foreign bodies. And generally we want to go ahead and put anesthetic in our patient's eyes, whether it's preparacane or fluoresce, before we take up the foreign body. And so we can break it down into non-metallic and metallic foreign bodies. For non-metallic foreign bodies, we can think about using a cotton tip applicator, whether or not we use preparacane on the tip, um, or we can use a sterile jeweler's forceps to remove it too. If it's a metallic foreign body, we can use the same tools. Otherwise, we can use a magnetic or golf spud. And if there's a rust ring, we can use an algae brush to remove the rust ring. But the point is to make sure the foreign body is removed and that the epithelium that's loose is removed as well without causing too much um, destruction. After that, we can think about giving our patient an antibiotic drop four times a day and or an antibiotic ointment to use for comfort. We can also think about dilating our patient if we suspect that it went to the back of the eye just for preventative measures. Um, but other optional treatment would be to give uh, preservative free artificial tears that we can use every one to two hours for our patient. Um, we can think about cyclopenolate or homatropine for pain. And we can also think about um, NSAID drops or oral NSAIDs. And then as far as a follow-up, we probably want to see your patient back in about two to five days, depending on the severity and location to the visual axis. So for people that don't know what I'm talking about, go ahead and leave a question in the comment section below. And for those that do know what I'm talking about, please go ahead and leave your thoughts of what you would do with this patient, or if you had a very different scenario and you use a different method to treat other than the standard of care that worked, please share that with us. It would be a great learning tool for everybody, and we'll see you guys next time.